The ports of Trinidad and Tobago are referred to as the gateway to the Americas because they often cater to containerized cargo from the US, Europe, the UK and the Far East. Trinidad and Tobago's unique geographical location also means that it is virtually in the middle of the world's shipping lanes with approximately 31,000 vessels passing within 25 nautical miles of its shores every year en route to or from the US and the Panama Canal. Unfortunately, Trinidad and Tobago's ports have not been able to maximize the nation's naturally occurring advantages. Container throughput is only 54.2 thousand TEUs or 20-foot equivalent units, far behind the capacity of neighboring ports and thus making a limited contribution to the local and regional economy. But this can change with the Labre Transshipment Port and Dry Dock Project proposed by China Harbor Engineering Company. Valued at 498 million US dollars, the first phase of La Brea Transshipment Port and Dry Dock is projected to occupy an area of approximately 160 hectares and consists of the administration area, the container terminal, and the dry dock area. Subsequent expansion will include a logistics area, reserved container terminal, general and bulk cargo terminal, and harbor with berthing for 13 vessels. La Brea itself offers several natural advantages that have favored its selection as the proposed site for the project. Located on the sheltered leeward side of Trinidad, the proposed site does not require a breakwater, a significant saving of project cost. Environmentally, the process of reclamation and creation of land will not require the removal or transplanting of any mangrove vegetation. Socially, the project will not have any complications associated with the acquisition of land or heritage issues associated with the demolition of existing structures. Economically, the Labre site will spur industrial and commercial activity and development of the southwestern peninsula, creating jobs and raising living standards in the area. The Labre site has also been selected so as not to impact vehicular traffic and transport infrastructure in northwest and central Trinidad, with access proposed via the Sir Solomon Hochoy Highway extension. The first phase of work will consist of dredging a navigation access channel, turning circle and berth basin. Revetments to accommodate the proposed reclamation for the port. Reclamation of land to develop all of the proposed port facilities. A container berth and an auxiliary berth. Supply of necessary facilities for container loading and unloading operations. Approach trestles connecting the container berth and yard. Dry dock and necessary facilities for vessel inspection and repairing services. Roadways and container yard facilities. And buildings and workshops required at the port. So, what makes Trinidad and Tobago right for a transshipment port and a dry dock? Firstly, the capacity factor. As we already know, existing port facilities allow for a container throughput of only 54.2 thousand TEUs or 20-foot equivalent units. Increasing port infrastructure capacity maximizes Trinidad and Tobago's strategic position regionally and globally 
and fosters local and regional commerce and economic growth. Secondly, there are the opportunities presented by the newly opened, expanded Panama Canal, which is considered a game changer. It allows larger vessels to ply the all waters routes from Asia and the Far East to the Caribbean and East Coasts of North and South America. At present, Trinidad and Tobago's ports can only serve vessels with 3 to 4,000 TEU capacities due to the limited port facilities and limited harbor draft. The new generation of ships built to take advantage of the expanded Panama Canal, also called post-Panamax vessels, will reach capacities of up to 12,000 TEU. The third factor for consideration is what Trinidad and Tobago's Caribbean neighbors are doing, taking advantage of the development opportunities presented by port expansion. The Bahamas is proceeding with the 250 million US dollar expansion of the Freeport Container Port. Jamaica has completed overall planning for the Goat Island Transshipment Hub. Barbados completed Bridgetown Port Berth 5 expansion at the beginning of 2016 and Berth 6 expansion will start at the end of the year. And Suriname is planning a deep water port. The fourth factor is catering to future needs of the global maritime industry. At present, there are only 13 dry docks in the Western Hemisphere capable of accommodating very large vessels. In the Western Atlantic region, current dry docking capacity for very large vessels represents just over 15% of global capacity. The completion of the expansion of the Panama Canal means that the number of such vessels using the canal will increase, as will the demand for dry docking. With 31,000 voyages through the canal passing within 25 nautical miles of Trinidad and Tobago each year, a dry dock for large vessels is a natural fit. Diversification of the economy is high on Trinidad and Tobago's agenda for development. The energy sector accounts for about 40% of GDP, which is subject therefore to fluctuations in the global energy market. The proposed transshipment port and dry dock will also create spin-off businesses and industries, helping achieve the dual targets of economic diversity and sustainable development. The Labre transshipment port and dry dock project has obtained all necessary approvals for funding by China Exim Bank. Despite a requested deferral, such is the strength of this project that funds have been reserved for immediate release by the government of China and China Exim Bank at the request of China Harbor Engineering. China Harbor Engineering will undertake the technically complicated aspects of the project and through a project management team, control, manage and supervise all local subcontractors and labor while providing relevant technical support and training. The proposed project will create at least 2,000 well-paying direct and indirect job opportunities and approximately 5,000 spin-off jobs in the Southwest region. Upon completion, more local employees will participate in the port and dry dock operation as well as in the other commercial activity generated by the presence of the port in this region. Founded in 1980, China Harbor Engineering Company is a subsidiary of China Communications Construction Company, a global Fortune 500 company. China Harbor Engineering develops and operates overseas business on behalf of China Communications Construction. Today, China Harbor Engineering boasts a global staff of 10,000 plus employees, managing over 10 billion US dollars worth of projects through a network of 60 overseas branch offices and subsidiaries, serving clients in 80 countries. Committed to the core values of keen responsibility, quality returns and win-win cooperation, China Harbor Engineering has an internationally respected track record of delivering landmark projects with the utmost professionalism. 
we look forward to another successful venture with the Labre Transshipment Port and Dry Dock project. Thanks for watching.